Yeah, into the fast lane we go for some track and field action on today's Sportsman Zone. Now, the World Athletics on the 20 Championship ended in Lima, Peru on Saturday with the Caribbean accumulating eight medals consisting of five gold, one silver and two bronze. Three nations, Jamaica, British Virgin Islands and Barbados were responsible for those medals. Let's get you up to speed with the numbers, starting with the medal table. 37 nations secured medals in Lima, led by the United States of America with 16, eight gold, four silver and four bronze. Ethiopia, People's Republic of China, also finishing ahead of the Jamaicans. The Jamaicans in fourth overall with five medals, four gold and one bronze and then the British Virgin Islands in 11th position tied 11th and Barbados tied for 34th position on the table not on that table by the way is Australia they finished outside the top 10 but that's because of the number of gold medals they had just two but overall 14 medals the Australians had a fabulous championship all right, let's have a look at the medal breakdown then for the Caribbean. For Jamaica, four gold medals. Alana Reed in the 100 meters. Karika Hill defending her 100 meter hurdles title. The 4x100 relay teams winning gold medals. And Shanoya Douglas, the 16 year old, winning 200 bronze. Then for the British Virgin Islands, Adeja Hodge winning both of their medals. 100 silver and 200 gold, 22.74 to win that 200 title. And a bronze medal for Barbados, Kishona Niles winning that one in the women's 100 meters. Once again, another major championship ending without a medal for the Bahamas, without a medal for Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, not a good look, um, Lance and Mariah, from that standpoint, but again, Great to see the BVI, great to see Barbados, like we had at the Olympic Games, Dominica doing well, um, and uh, St. Lucia doing well, and uh, but a couple of the traditional teams not doing so well at these global events. Yeah, teams like Trinidad and Tobago and the Bahamas have a history of winning gold medals at the World Juniors, as it was then called, World on the 20s now. So it would be a little bit concerning for them, especially coming on the heels of them not winning any medals, Bahamas and TNT, that is, at the Olympic Games in, in Paris. But on the, on the flip side, uh, very, very encouraging performances from some of the other other athletes competing and significantly, Ricardo, uh, uh, quite a few of the standout performers eligible to compete at the next World Honor 20s. Yeah, which, which is important um, because you think about it, Karika Hill, um, the Jamaican defending her title, um, you look at the Jamaican team, for example, someone like Gary Card, who was fifth in the 100 final, he's eligible to return mm -hmm. in, in, in a couple of years. Brianna Campbell, who ran the third leg for Jamaica. Tiana Lee Terrellong, who missed out on advancing in the women's 100 meters, but so much talent, so much quality. Shanoya Douglas, who was third in the 200 meters. So that's always good because these athletes are young and they have the experience. And when they return in two years, hopefully they can utilize that experience. But, you know, we were talking today, Lance and Mariah, and I was um, trying to come up with my performance of the championship. Well, to be honest, I wasn't trying. It was pretty easy for me because it has to be DeAndre Daly. Now, I think I have spoken about this young man quite a lot on this show. It's because I think he is a supreme talent. There are a lot of quality young sprinters across the Caribbean and specifically in Jamaica. But I think he is the best of them all when it comes to his talent. And I really do believe that if he is in the right environment post high school, that he has the potential to be a world beater. Clearly, from what we saw in the individual 100 meters, he has to work on his start. That's been an issue for him. I did learn maybe a year or two ago that part of his issue, because he's had so many injuries, um, especially with his hamstring, there was a time when he wasn't really pushing from the blocks, and that might have hampered him for a bit. I don't know if that is still the case, but I think we saw a glimpse of what he's capable of on that ankle leg. And don't forget, he did a similar thing in the Bahamas last year yeah. um, at the Carifta Games when he ran down the Bahamian Carlos Brown um, in the 4 by 100 But he's a supreme talent, and that for me, Lance and Mara, was the performance of the championship from a Caribbean standpoint.
Yeah, I, I think I agree with you from the perspective of uh, that motoring final leg that he ran because he got the bat on in about fourth spot. 50 meters from the finish, he did appear, but it's, it's hard to assess based on the trajectory of the camera angles and so on. But he did look as if he had about seven meters to close um, with 50 meters to go, and he did it. So that was, that was as spectacular as you would get in a four-by-one relay. Yeah. Have you seen anything as good as that at a, at a global championship? Oh, I, I, I am thinking not, because before you said at a global championship, <laughs> I was going to mention Sherika Jackson's uh, finish in Girls Champ some years ago. Yes, was it? against Flying Angels. Yeah. There that. was also Shelley at a Diamond League meet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. Merle Notti ran a spectacular anchor leg as well. Um, I'm trying to remember when that was. Might have been, was it the 91 World Championships that Jamaica came through to win? And 2003, Christina Ron of France yes. ran one of the most spectacular anchor legs I've seen to take the French woman to the gold medal at home in Paris. So that was pretty special as well. But this was right up there with, mm. for me, some of the best anchor leg performances I've seen. And the time in which he did it too, because against a team like Great Britain, who they're known, of course, to be dominant in this event. I felt as if, and Lance spoke about him um, taking it over in fourth position. That also was so impressive because it could have been easy for them to slip up. Yeah, and great as well for just transitioning now to Adeja Hodge because I must admit, right, I had concerns when Adeja Hodge skipped the Carifta Games and she said she wanted to focus on getting to the Olympics. And I understand that dream and how special it must be for an 18-year-old to compete on the greatest stage. But my concern at the time was that I felt that we're in an age where junior athletics, under 20 athletics is difficult. And I felt like I wanted her to focus on this and coming here and dominating here and winning at this age group for her country. She didn't do it in the 100 meters, well beaten by another outstanding athlete in Alana Reed. but I was very pleased to see her win that 200 gold medal for the British Virgin Islands. Yeah, to be very honest, her 100 meter loss to Alana Reed I thought was pretty impressive as well. Even though Alana Reed is unquestionably a top flight performer, she was closing on her significantly in the last 10 meters or so. I know Alana may have you know, been, been easing off the gas a bit, but I thought Deja Hodge's 100 meter run was pretty solid. And uh, based on that effort, I was, I was pretty confident that she would have won the the 200. Yeah, here she is with some work to do. Alana Reed is in control here, yeah. but Hodge is closing really well in the last uh, 10, 15 meters there. And uh, I, I don't think she lost too many marks in, in that loss, well, given what, the fact that Alana Reed is such an accomplished sprinter. Well, Ricardo, my question for you would be what areas you think she would have to work on if she were to challenge Alana Reed for that gold medal? What I mean, well, it's gone now. Um, so no, but like moving forward, because the two of them are going to come up against each other in future races. What I mean, clearly, she has to work on her start. There's yeah. no doubt about that. I mean, that was a struggle throughout the course of the championship. I think generally, uh, in the last few seasons, she has come through as a much better 200 runner than she is a 100 meter runner and that showed itself here at the world under 20 championships where she was able to take the half lap event even qualifying for the olympics was in the 200 meters and she did pretty well in paris um, given where she is at in her development i think going forward now there has to be a plan in place for Adeja Hodge. There is no doubt that she has talent, but what happens from here? Does she go pro? Does she go to university? If she does, what is the program and when do you expect her to break out as a senior athlete? Because let me tell you something, it is not going to happen overnight and it is not going to happen quickly. It is going to be, if it happens, a three to four year process. And whoever is in charge of her has to be willing to understand that and work um, in a pragmatic way to her getting to her peak when she gets to 
22, 23 years old, or being able to challenge the best in the world by that time. One of the things right across the Caribbean is that when we have quality junior athletes, we expect the transition to be immediate when they move to the seniors. I personally don't see that in um, Adeja's future. So I think it's going to take some time, and I think the individuals who work with her will have to be patient. Yeah, and I, to strengthen your point there, Ricardo, the greatest of them all, Usain Bolt, mm -hmm. between 2003 and 2006, there was a, th a three-year period there where it took him some time to transition efficiently or or brilliantly to the to the seniors and if it could happen to Bolt then <laughs> it could happen to everyone. Yeah. Bolt, Bolt did take some time between the ages of 17 to 20 years old to really get the feel of the of the of the seniors. Yeah I mean I know he had some injury issues and so on which contributed part to that. of the process though the yes. injuries are part of the, the process. process. 2003 yeah. he went to the world championships in Paris he didn't compete. Mm -hmm. 2004 didn't get out of the first round of the Olympic Games although he ran 1993 that year and was the fastest in the world heading into um, Athens. 2005, he got to the World Championship final and we know what happened there. He stopped. 2006, mm. didn't make it to the Commonwealth Games. So yes, you're very much right. Yeah. And 2007, he finally started to get it together and won that World Championship silver medal. One quick point before we have to go, because yeah. I spoke of DeAndre Daly as my highlight personally of the Under-20 Championships, his ankle leg performance. The disappointment for me, though, was Michelle Smith in the 400 hurdles. Um, 56-39 in her semifinal for the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, number three, number two in the world heading into um, the event. And I don't know what happened in the final. 57-21 finished in fourth, and she just did not look like the athlete we have seen for the last two or three years. And, mm. and so for me, that was a massive disappointment to see her finishing in fourth. And not just disappointment, but a massive shock as well. Yeah. Because I felt even if she didn't win the gold medal, she would definitely be on the podium. She was nowhere close to it. And I just wondered if she was okay, if she is okay, if what could have gone wrong. Yeah. Um, because she's at her best yeah. this season. She's 55-96. Yeah. She was 57-21 right. yeah. we, we in to, that final. We, we have to assume that she rebound because she's, she's that kind of quality athlete. So the expectation would be that you know something went wrong in Peru and that she will be back and back in a big way. Yeah. I hope so. She's yeah. such a talent. Let's take a break on the Sportsmax Zone, the second zone update to come. And we have Lejay Williams, who's going to be joining us for a segment. And tell you what, I have a new name for him. He'll want to stick around to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.